friends. So, welcome back to the lab course on employment communication and uh, today we are going to do the 15th lecture of the series of uh, 40 lectures 8 week course on the NPTEL course on employment communication a lab based course. So, we present to you lecture 15 practice session 1 of module the second. In this module, we have basically talked about uh, nonverbal communication and we have also covered all aspects in great depth of cross cultural communication or it is also called as intercultural communication. So, as far as uh, we have impressed upon you the importance of these two topics which comprise module 2 of the course, it is my profound pleasure and happiness that I present to you the first lab session on module 2 titled first half on nonverbal communication and second half on cross cultural communication. Now, when we talk about uh, nonverbal communication, we are talking about any sort of communication other than words. So, to revise once again because the word verbal comes from the Latin verbum V E R B U M which means words. So, non-verbal is non-words and there were seven types of non-verbal communication. This has been dealt with in depth, depth at uh, the proper lectures on non-verbal communication introduction and conclusion. So, in this uh, practice session what we will have are uh, what we will be doing is in fact uh, two activities. The first one is titled face to face with a man eater and the second one is face to face with a dangerous foreigner. Both these role plays comprise uh, two participants of the MHRM program at the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, the IIT Kharagpur. And uh, since this is an activity, uh, both of these are activities on non-verbal communication not a single word will be uttered. The module will in fact display to you how without words also one can communicate. Before we film or record these two activities, we will be giving the situational description of the two role plays, role play 1 uh, face to face with a dangerous man eater and role play 2 that is face to face with a dangerous foreigner. So, it is clearly specified that no words are to be used except for non linguistic sounds and gestures, postures, body language in short. Then we will be doing another two activities which relate to the second topic here which is cross cultural communication in module 2. And uh, these two activities are also very interesting you will note when you observe the recorded session. In the first activity of uh, intercultural communication or cross cultural communication, we have a situation of uh, a very orthodox let us say Tamilian father and he has a son who is returning from abroad, he is working abroad and how do the father and son they talk about the prospective marriage of the son. So, this is an example of intercultural communication in the sense that the son who has been abroad for his studies and higher education thereafter got a job and is working in a very good company in US and he has fallen in love with the black American lady, she is a divorcee and he wants to marry her because she brought about lot of positive changes in his life including when he went into depression, she pulled him out of depression. So, in such a situation he with his uh, background or with his exposure to the western uh, culture, the western society having uh, read there, been educated there, worked there for quite some time and uh, being in the know of all the way 
ways in which the westerners communicate culturally. Now, he is coming back after a long time and he has already made a phone call to his father that he is bringing along with him his fiancee, the black American lady and he is about to spill the beans to his father. Of course, the intimation has already been received, but he is about to tell his father that he would be marrying this girl across the cultural boundaries. And on the other hand, we have uh, the role of the father in this third activity of uh, this lecture number 15 of module 2, Practication 1, in which the father is a very conservative orthodox Tamlin and he has taken lot of loan to get his son educated abroad in US and he also has three, three more daughters to get married off. The loan also has to be repaid. So, he had been looking frantically for a prospective bride for his well educated foreign returned son, but uh, now the son has uh, dropped a bombshell on him by saying that he would like to marry the black American uh, lady whom he has fallen in love with. So, in such a situation how do they role play this uh, dilemma of uh, marriage or intercultural marriage or prospective marriage between a foreign returned or a US returned uh, educated highly educated well placed son and uh, how does he communicate his desire to marry the lady love and uh, how does his father who is orthodox Tamlin who thinks about what society will think about this kind of match who is also now under the burden of uh, returning or uh, in fact uh, crossing out the loan which he has taken for the education and the uh, higher uh, placement of his son and at the same time has responsibility of sisters to be married off, his daughters to be married off. So, across the so many uh, hurdles which are created due to this cultural situation will be the enactment of uh, role play 3, the first activity which is based on the second topic which is cross cultural communication. Then in conclusion we will have activity 4 or the fourth and last activity in this uh, lecture which is titled on the road. It shows the way in which across the borders, across the cultures we respect the traffic, traffic signals and the traffic rules and regulations. So, the scenario is like this that there is a certain Mr. ABC and it is 2 pm in the night and he is going to cross the road and uh, he sees that the traffic light has turned red, but uh, there is no traffic in any direction because it is 2 am in the night quite an unearthly hour even if this is a big town or a official city, we are not aware of that exactly. So, what will he do exactly if he is a typical American? that is those in the western part of the world who have high respect for time and rules and regulations and uh, what would he do number B. Secondly, the second scenario let us imagine what would he do in case he were a typical Indian on the eastern part of the world where we have uh, not much respect for time, we do have, but we do not have that much respect for time as a typical westerner or an American let us say for example. And uh, otherwise also you see daily in your life, in common day life we see how people are uh, disobeying the traffic signals, disobeying the traffic policeman and throwing all the rules of traffic uh, regulations into the wind. When it comes to hurry, when it comes to how quickly I must reach my destination, we do not care for anything, we do not even care whether there is a CCTV at the traffic uh, crossroads or there is a high and mighty traffic policeman or that there are traffic rules and regulations which we must observe. So, what would uh, a typical American do in such a situation and what would a typical Indian do in such a situation. So, we have uh, lined up for you these four activities, just a quick revision. We have role play 1 and 2 related to the first topic here, non-verbal communication, role play 1 face to face with a dangerous man eater role play to face to face with a dangerous foreigner and we have two activities lined up for displaying the way in which we can uh, we can assess or we can 
evaluate or we can practically show the concepts we have learned in the theoretical lectures on intercultural communication that is intercultural communication 1, intercultural communication introduction and intercultural communication 2 that is intercultural communication conclusion. The situation is uh, with you, it is titled face to face with a man eater and uh, the uh, point is that uh, we are imagining a situation where there is an Indian sailor and the other one is a man eater. There are two participants required for this role play or activity. The one who is an Indian sailor is the only survivor of a shipwreck near the west coast of Australia and he has been washed ashore and when he uh, regains consciousness he finds himself in face to face, to face with the Australian Aborigine, most probably the man eating tribe of Western Australia. So, this Aborigine, the other character, the other one who will be participating in the role play, this Aborigine appears to be somewhat hostile and the point is that he might harm you in the sense of he might eat you because he is a man eater. So, he might be dreaming of cooking and eating you with his friends and the situation which you have to role play is to reassure him that you are harmless and you will not be shooting him because you do not have any guns. You have to impress on the Aborigine, the man eater Australian Aborigine that uh, you are from a small village in India and you have two elderly parents and you have some children to take care of. This has to be done only through gestures and non-linguistic words. You also have to tell him that uh, you are a vegetarian and in case if you want that the other, the Australian Aborigine, the man eater should not turn violent or you would not like him to eat you up, gobble you, then you have to tell him that you instead are thirsty and hungry and uh, you would be requesting for some water and fruits because you are a vegetarian. So, this would kind of impress him or her that he would not be eating you up and uh, this entire activity is to be done without using any words except for some uh, non-linguistic sounds, non-sequiturs and if necessary. Uh, I think uh, that would be enough to explain the situation. So, let us have two volunteers for this short activity. We will take 5 minutes for this activity. Come. Very good. Uh, we have with us Mr. Tirthonandi in the role of man eater and Miss Varsha in the role of the, uh, the Indian sailor who has been shipwrecked. Uh, so, the man eater is the Australian Aborigine, yes. Tirthonandi. So, we begin. Hello friends, so we are back again with the second activity in this uh, lab class on uh, body language and this is a role play which will be enacted by Mr. Anupam Khan and Mr. Hashim Ali, MHRM first year students from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences IIT Kharagpur. So this role play is, uh, I will just give you a brief outline of what they are going to do. They are going to do it uh, non-verbally, I mean entirely body language, no sounds also. The title of this activity is uh, Face to Face with a Dangerous Foreigner and I have taken it from the book Business Communication Strategies by M. M. Monipalli of Am Ahmedabad. So, the situation is like this that uh, there is an Aborigine living on the western coast of Australia and this morning as you come out to fish in the shallow waters of the sea, you 
that is Hashim Ali finds a dangerous looking man that is Anpam Dash lying on the beach. He is neither black nor white, but somewhat brown. He is not from your part of the world. And now he is getting up and looking at you. Hang on and find out what he is like. Use only gestures and if necessary, non-linguistic sounds. He can't make sense of your words. More than anything else, be careful. Don't be too friendly. Ask him to get away before he gets into trouble. He may even have one of those weapons that send out fire and smoke with a big sound. He might kill you if he stays on. You can never trust these foreigners. Don't smile or show friendliness until you are sure his intentions are good and he has no weapons. So over to Hashim and Anpam Dash. The two activities we have for uh, topic number two in this uh, module second practice session one lecture 15 is the first one on uh, gone with the wind the situation where you have the foreign returned son highly educated well placed with a good company in America returning to India to his uh, village in uh, Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu perhaps and uh, trying to talk with his age old orthodox uh, conventional father in law father sorry about uh, his uh, desire to marry a black american lady gone with the wind this is the third activity and the fourth and last activity in this uh, practice session lab 15 is uh, titled on the roads and we have already described this to you so let's have a good time now Welcome back to the course once again. Hello everyone, my name is Srinivas and he is my father, Satyanarayan. Uh, he belongs to a middle class Brahmin family from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, he, I have three sisters. He is a reserved and cons uh, conservative person. Now, uh, during my B.Tech, I wanted to pursue my uh, M.S. from uh, America. Uh, we were financially weak and he, uh, he took a loan of 1 million. Now he is in debt of 1 million. I, he wants me to marry a girl from Andhra Pradesh who will give me the dowry of uh, 7 to 8 millions. 
uh, actually have a list of uh, girls from Andhra Pradesh that will give me the dowry. Uh, today I will confront him and I will confess him that I'm in love. I'm in love with some other girl, and uh, let's see his reaction to it. Uh, he's my son, and I sent him uh, to a convent school, and he has done his schooling from there. And after that, I sent him mother's ID, and from from his earlier days of childhood, he is a really brilliant student. And after completing his degree in Madras IIT, he was sent to US and he pursued his study there. Now he is in a multinational company and he is doing his job as a project leader of a CAD project. And he, for the last five years he is living in California and his mood got changed previously. He was very obedient, he was a very nice guy. And, uh, but later I got some change. For the last one and a half year, I, I am facing the change. Previously, he used to call the home. Uh, he used to call his man, or his mom, me, and all the family members. He used to send money regularly. But later, he got decayed, and he uh, reduced the number of calls. And now he doesn't even send the money. He doesn't even think the family. And now I have to talk to him. That was the reason behind this. I have to take more about this. So dear, how are you? Hey dad, I wanted to discuss something really important to you. Yeah, yeah it's also some discussion. Actually, there is this girl, okay. Carolyn. Um, actually, I met, I met her a few years back. And uh, I actually fell in love with each other. Um, and I'm thinking to marry her. She's actually Afro-American and she's a divorcee. But uh, Somehow we fell in love with each other. So I uh, want to marry. I'm really sorry that I won't be able to marry the girl of your choice. So is it the reason that for which you are not carrying your family for one last one and a half year? Is it the reason you are not carrying your family? You are not even calling us. You are not, not sending the money. Is it the reason? I have been spending a lot of time with her, but I, uh, we don't live together. Uh, there have been a lot of work that I've been doing. That was the reason I was not able to call you. So now you are showing the excuses of your work, right? Okay, anyway, so you should be busy because you are in such a big post. Now, before saying this, didn't you think about our society, about our childhood days, about our culture? Didn't you? You forgot everything? That she's, she's uh, ready to convert into Hinduism. And we are all um, ready to get married now. So you you are saying me, or you are taking the permission from your guardian. You are saying me you have already decided to marry her, and you are saying me. What's the no, Dad, we need your permission now. So How can we marry? The way you are saying you have already decided. The, the way you are saying that it looks you have already you have already uh, decided. No, Dad, I just, I just wanted to confront you. I just wanted to tell you that we are deeply in love with each other, and I don't see anyone filling her spot. Okay, so okay. I really I'm want to marry saying, her. I'm not saying that you shouldn't love, but before this you will marry her and you will fly to US. And can you imagine after that what will happen? Can we, can we stay in this in this place? What will the colony people say? What will the all our neighbors say? We can't go outside of our home. Please, dear, please try to understand the thing. Modern, you are becoming modern. It's it's good, but you shouldn't be so modern that your some activity will hamper the homage of your family. Papa, why are you thinking about society? Because man is a social animal. You have, you can't go out of the society. You I think you should. Do you, do you, you think should you more think about me than the society. No, I am. I'm your son. I am also thinking for you. Then I you have, you I have, I have seen the light of universe more than you. I have much experience. You are just floating, my dear. Please try to land on the realm of mundane. Think practically. Then you can understand. You're not thinking about me, Dad. Okay, you take time, and whatever I'm saying, that the girl I choose, and also with the concern of your mom, please keep faith on us, dear. Please keep faith. But I won't be able to live with her, and I wouldn't be able to be happy with her. Then what's the point in marrying some random girl? So, but still, you think yourself you take time for today or a couple of days you take and you think about that and I will 
make a conversation with the girl I chose. This girl is also very good. You first talk to her, then we will discuss the matter once again. If surely, right? First, surely. Then discuss. Definitely. Okay. Have you sleep now? So we have now the last uh, two minute activity in this uh, video lecture number 16, 15 sorry. And the objective of this activity is to display the different attitudes between a typical westerner and a typical Indian with reference to observing traffic rules. Uh, we remember that uh, one aspect of non-verbal communication is time or chronomics. This activity is related to that. If uh, we recollect what we have been going through in the earlier video lecture on non-verbal communication, the Westerner normally values time, he or she respects time, punctuality is in their genes, we can say like that, you know, gently speaking. But if you come to our side of the world, in the eastern part of the world, let us say the Asian countries and the South Asian countries, we do not that much respect or value time. In fact, uh, sometimes you will observe that people come late only to show that they are important. And it has also been seen, uh, I was just telling in the lecture in the morning today, in the recorded lecture, that uh, in the Indian context or in this part of the world, when there is an official formal meeting going on, the chairperson himself herself will be talking about X, Y, Z, some social, some chit chat before coming to the main agenda for discussion. So, this activity is against this kind of background, the respect we have for time and how diligent we are as far as the observance of traffic rules are concerned. So, the scenario is like this, it is a situation which is on the road and you see it uh, day in and day out. Let us say we have a fictitious character, his name is Mr. ABC and he is driving a car in a big city. The time is about 2 a.m. You can very well understand that the traffic would be less at that point of time in the night, late night. As he reaches the crossroads, his traffic light turns red. Absolutely no, traf no traffic in any direction. And uh, you know, in such a situation, it would be our tendency to do generally what is not to be done because there is nobody to observe. Who bothers about CCTV nowadays? No. So anyway, let us say what is, my question to you is what is he likely to do, A, if he is a typical American and why and B, the second aspect, let us just imagine ourselves in a situation where we imagine this Mr. ABC to be a typical Indian and what he would do in such situations, in this situation. In this scenario, there are three options which he would do. Uh, the first is he would cross the road, there is no traffic in any direction and no traffic police either. The option B, the second one is he would wait till the light turns green because a red traffic light is in fact a red traffic light. It is a deterrent, it says no, stop where you are. It is not a question of whether there is traffic or not, red is red and red means red. C, the third option which we have is he will stop check and cross carefully. If he is only, if he is absolutely sure that there is no traffic from any direction, it is okay to jump the red light. So, the floor is yours. Anyone? Varsha and Tito will do it. Huh. Uh, if he is a typical Indian, I think he will cross the road because uh, Indians generally, I mean, they just see uh, once here and there and they will see that if there is no traffic, I mean, even if there is traffic, it is very uh, common to jump traffic signals. So, when there is no traffic, I think there is no question of waiting. So, they will cross the road. Uh, if the driver is a typical American, uh, what I feel is that Americans, uh, they, uh, I mean, give value to rules and procedures, though they give value to time also, but they do give value to rules and procedures. So, since uh, red means red and uh, red means stopping, I think they will still stop and wait for the signal to turn green before they proceed. 
I don't think that the concept of actually stopping for a red light applies or is actually relevant for any Indian because nobody will actually. And as for an American, I don't think like just because they're for a different country, they're going to be you know held to a higher standard or they're going to uh, conform to rules just because they are from a different country. Uh, unless of course there is a CCTV surveillance which is almost unheard of in India, uh, the mostly they are going to jump the red lights no matter what the situation. Good. So, so you see that um, as far as this important aspect of time, you know that uh, as far as non-verbal communication is concerned, even odors, body odors are part of the workplace environment, non-verbal messages are passed through body odors. In our side of the world, it is considered as if uh, to give your breath off to others is considered normal. But in the Western workplace, you have uh, this idea of perfuming or applying DO or spray before you enter the office or workplace, irrespective of whether you have taken a bath or not. Now, apart from that small diversion, again, we come to what we have heard uh, Varsha and Tito speak on the matter. So, uh, incidentally, a typical American will value not only time, but rules and procedures. Also, remember the fact that uh, in the West, uh, traffic penalties for such violations are quite high. So they will take that into consideration. Whereas, uh, as they have said, the Indian would like to jump the rules or uh, jump the traffic or break the rules because of the fact that nobody is watching and everybody is in a hurry. When it comes to the traffic signal, everybody becomes in a great hurry. So uh, don't take it otherwise, but I feel if I have to speak my mind, that when it comes to the workplace, we are very casual and uh, not very committed to spending time wisely and uh, profoundly and being totally committed to the time which has been spent. But when it comes to just crossing a signal, we become very short on time. And everybody is in a great hurry, if you see in India, at whether it's a metro city or a Mofasil town, everybody is in a great hurry when it comes to four-point intersections. So we will conclude this lecture. Thank you for your cooperation and thank you for your active participation. May God bless you and we will meet again very soon. Thank you once again.